All right, good evening, Prep Huddle fans. Thanks for joining us here January 28th. Tony, how's it going? Good, man. How you been? Pretty good. We uh, just got wrapped up a, a fun day talking to a lot of our Strive schools at the Holtis Convention Center. Highly recommend the place for all of you looking to book some events in central Nebraska. It was a lot of fun. Had schools coming in, um, and we just talked about what the NSA is doing with postseason, got a bunch of feedback from them, uh, what people are doing with their classrooms and students, and got a lot of great ideas. So it was a lot of fun uh, doing that. always enjoy talking to our schools, and, and they're in the trenches every day. So it was, it was yeah, fun. Absolutely. All right. So, um, again, we are presented by Cornerstone Bank. I want to thank them, first of all. Um, you can find them online at cornerstoneconnect.com. And uh, we've got a great show lined up for you today. We've got a ton of basketball. I was out three games last night. We've got the Central Conference Tournament going on and the CRC here locally in our neck of the woods. And we've got several other Strive schools that are in conference play as well. Um, you know, if you want to uh, tweet at us, you can always use the hashtag PrepHuddleLive. Right down there, would love to hear from you to see where you're watching from. So, Tony, I'll let you kind of take it from there, and um, we're going to run through all those scores and and uh, updates as we've had a lot of basketball the last uh, couple of days and uh, from last weekend. So, yeah, it's been uh, it's been quite busy, and it'll get busier. You know, the the real fun uh, time is tomorrow night. Kind of, you get into semifinals tomorrow in the Crossroads Conference. So that'll be fun tomorrow night in York, and then the finals there Friday, and then I think the 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 Central 10 splits up their semifinals. I think they do a Thursday, Friday semifinal, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then their finals are Saturday at York Senior High. And uh, so that'll be, uh, you know, really fun week there. We'll get into the Southern Conference Tournament next week. Um, the Centennial Conference Tournament is going on with some great teams. I checked this morning, I think seven, seven teams in the boys' tournament were ranked. Uh, in class C1 or C2, so awesome. uh, every game's <laughs> every game's a tough one there. I think when Mike comes on a little bit later, we'll chat with him about. I know he was at Grand Island Central Catholic in Columbus Scotus last night, so uh, that was a that was a game where Central Catholic kind of got to turn the table on on Scotus, and then um, out west you've got the Republican Plains Conference uh, tournament going on, and. Uh, we featured, of course, Dundee County Stratton, their girls team, uh, in our rewind today, which was really fun to talk to Coach Belke out there and the program that he's built and really has a nice team. So might get into them in a little more detail later in the show and uh, just kind of go through all of those. Um, I was just going to start here. I think before the break we were just going to run through the girls' rankings really quick, do some quick uh, uh, wrestling rankings as well. And then maybe just reset those girls' conference tournaments we have in the Central Conference, the CRC and the Republican Plains, uh, kind of reset those semifinals because all those semifinals are uh, set to go for later this week. So um, in the all-class top 10, uh, we have Millard West and Omaha Central now are both ranked in that all-class top 10. Uh, Millard West is fifth, and Omaha Central is ninth. Omaha Central is actually in the all-class top 10. They weren't in it last week. They're actually up to seventh uh, in the Class A rankings, and Millard West is is still third. So uh, Millard West, again, I believe, two of their losses to Benson, who's number one and undefeated, one of their losses to Omaha Central, and then I think that fourth loss was to Omaha Westside. They played them all like in about a four- or five-game stretch uh, early January. Omaha Westside is fifth there. So um, go down to Class B. Uh, you have York who advanced into the semifinals of the Central 10 last night with a nice one over Seward. They're 12-2. and two. Uh, They are behind Pius, Platteview, Elkhorn, and Norris. So they're, they're fifth there. And in Class C1, Lincoln Christian is still at the top. Uh, we do not have any ranked teams uh, in the girls' side of, of Class C1. Uh, we do have in uh, Class C2, kind of like they've been, uh, kind of like they've been all season, Sutton and Twin River still kind of just sitting there at seventh and eighth, uh, right there, uh, right there in the ranking. Sutton uh, does have uh, a win over Hastings Saint Cecilia, who is ranked second. So uh, a lot of parity, I think in uh, I think in that class. 
And then uh, we do go down to Class D1, and that looks like maybe it could be a fun one for us at state tournament. As we have Dundee County Stratton uh, is now 18 and 0. Uh, they beat Hay Center in the quarterfinals of of their conference tournament on uh, Monday night, so 18 and 0 there. And Fullerton, who just won uh, the Goldenrod Conference tournament last week, moves up from fourth to third. Uh, they're 14 and two. They beat Humphrey St. Francis, who was ranked sixth. So nice win for Fullerton there. I think Taylor, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that Fullerton and Humphrey St. Francis are in the same sub district. So um, that'll be interesting. I'm sure <laughs> they'll meet again. So that'd be probably a third time actually uh, for those two uh, to meet up. And in Fullerton, I has, has got them uh, both times. Uh, we drop down to uh, Class D two. And uh, Hampton is seventh. They dropped from fifth. They had a loss last week to Meridian. Uh, I had to pull up their stats. I know Meridian had a one of their top players was injured early on. Um, they've got her back now, and I think they've won about three or four games in a row. Uh, they knocked off BDS last night in the Crossroads Conference tournament, so they've advanced to the quarterfinals there. And uh, then Extra Milligan is ranked tenth. Hampton and play- Extra Milligan will play each other tomorrow night in one semifinal of the Crossroads Conference Tournament. And then Meridian uh, will play Giltner, who is fifth at 14-1. and one. Their only loss of the year was on Strive to Osceola. That game was on a couple uh, couple weeks ago. So I kind of just reset those girls' semifinals for the CRC. Again, the early game tomorrow is Giltner, uh, Giltner and Meridian, which will be the 3 o'clock game. And then the 6 o'clock game tomorrow – will be Hampton and Exeter Milligan. So it's seeds one, two, three, and five. Uh, one, two, three, and five on the, um, on the uh, girls' side for the Crossroads Conference Tournament. In the Centennial Conference Tournament, uh, on the girls' side, we have York, who's the top seed, and I think they will play Fairbury. Is that correct, Taylor? Fairbury beat Aurora last night in yes. girls? Yes. Is that correct? And then Holdridge beat Crete, and they will play Grand Island Northwest, who has won two games now in the tournament. They upset. Yeah. You were there last night. They upset Central City. And Coach Herzberg, uh, I think they've won like four of their last five. So, uh, you know, they were almost a brand-new team starting out uh, this year, and he's really kind of got them, got them gelling together. Um, I know the Plocky girl and the Fisher girl kind of have been leading them these last few games, and it seems like they've got a, a good little uh, rotation going there. So those games will be at York High, uh, and just double-check. Yep, those will be tomorrow night. So yep. uh, those will be at 6 and 745, and you can watch those on Strive, both of those games, I believe, Taylor. Is that correct? Yeah, so we'll those will all be on York's uh, Strive page, and we'll also put them on strivesports.com so you can find them both places. So. So we'll have both of those on tomorrow night. And then um, the other one I wanted to uh, run out was the Republican Plains out west where we have uh, Dundee County, Stratton, and uh, I believe also we have Southern Valley. You actually kind of pulled an upset there. But Dundee County, Stratton will play uh, Juanita Palisade, who is 13-4. and four. So they will, um, they will play tomorrow night in Hayes Center. And so that's kind of a – there'll be a girl-boy doubleheader in Hay Center, and then there'll be a girl-boy doubleheader at Southwest in Bartley. And on the other side there, um, who did Coach Belke tell me? Southern Valley actually upset Arapahoe. Yep. And Bertrand, I believe Bertrand and Cambridge were both upset. And I think it's Medicine Valley. I think Southern Valley plays Medicine Valley. So on the east side, that's the five and the six playing in the final there. And so the, those that game will be at Southwest, and then the winners will meet uh, on Saturday, and they'll meet in Wallace. Uh, and the boy, girls' game is at 6, and the boys' game is at 745. So uh, that's, how, that's how that one will play out. So – um, it's kind of interesting, though. I don't have Thursday. Okay, the girls' games are Thursday and the boys' games are Friday um, at Hayes Center. So uh, that's how they uh, that's how they do that. So um, in those both of those semifinal games are at 7:45. They have some preceding kind of losers bracket kind of games there. It looks like uh, prior to that. Um, so those are kind of the ones we wanted to reset. Uh, I know also. 
I was going to check really quick on the Centennial Conference girls. You have Lincoln Christian, uh, I believe, is in the finals there. And I, I'm probably not versed enough. I've looked through the boys' scores, but I've not looked through the girls' scores. I believe Lincoln Christian, Hastings St. Cecilia, Aquinas, and Newman are the semifinalists there. Those games are tomorrow night at Lincoln Christian. And then the finals there are on Saturday. So um, should be a fun week of uh, – high school uh, conference basketball uh, tournaments uh, going on uh, here before uh, we hit even another big yeah. week next week when we hit the Southern Con- Southern Conference tournament. So um, yeah, that's kind of those, those uh, kind of wraps up the girls' side of the conference tournament and the rankings. So. Yeah, and it's not going to slow down, right? I mean, this is no. – we're uh, full metal, uh, full pedal to metal here, and yeah. it's fun. It's it was good atmospheres at both gyms. I mean, I mean, not huge crowds. Central City boys had to go down to Aurora, and then they hosted girls. But um, good atmospheres there, and excited to uh, stream those games. We're actually going to have some play-by-play guys from UNL, uh, some students, some alumni from Skyler doing those games, and then some students and a, a teacher. So be sure to tune in to those. We'll be tweeting uh, throughout that tournament and CRC championships on Friday and tomorrow so be an action-packed next couple of days so yeah let's run in i think before we hit the break here and okay. uh bring uh mike on just run through the wrestling rankings again really quick uh as we get into uh this weekend is kind of the last i guess maybe say regular season weekend you could call it a lot of teams hosting invites things of that nature before conference tournaments hit um so a lot of conference tournaments next weekend and then I believe the the 12th, 13th, uh, 14th areas when districts will hit, and then that next uh, that next week, the 19th, 20th will be uh, will be the state tournament for wrestling, which will be at, again at the Century Link Center in Omaha. So um, in Class A, uh, you have uh, Millard South leading the the team rankings with Carney leading the dual rankings. Uh, Carney, Hastings, and Millard South are all one, two, three, and Grand Island four. Uh, they just kind of uh, mix each other up there. Carney's one in the dual, Millard South uh, one in the tournament rankings. Uh, Millard West is tenth in the uh, in the dual rankings uh, as far as strive schools go. There. So in Class B, uh, as we get over to the team rankings in Class B, uh, we have uh, York is sixth, and Grand Island Northwest is seventh in the in the team rankings. And then we have in the dual rankings, York third and Grand Island Northwest is fourth over there uh, for our Strive schools. And in Class C, just run over that real quick. Uh, Class C, we have uh, Central City is seventh in the team rankings. Wilbur Clayton is eighth. And Centennial is ninth. And those teams are also ranked uh, in the dual rankings, uh, up a slot for each of them. Central City sixth, Centennial or Wilbur Claytonia 7th and Centennial 8th there uh, for our Strive schools. And then in Class D, uh, we have uh, Creighton ninth and Palmer is 10th in the in the team rankings in wrestling. And then Creighton is actually 3rd in the dual rankings. And High Plains is 7th and Thayer Central is ninth to round out our uh, Strive, schools, uh, Strive schools for high school wrestling. So uh, that will get really busy again, Taylor, as we said here, the next three weeks are kind of the, the end of the season. And then, of course, they have the state duels right after the, the state tournament, of course, the week after, which is a fun little one-day event they've put together. The NSA has done a great job with that dual tournament, uh, which will be at UNK again, and nice little atmosphere over there. And, of course, uh, a great place for the kids to go wrestle. UNK is obviously one of the top wrestling programs in Division Two in the nation, and so to be able to get them over there and, and get in that atmosphere at the health and sports center is a, a really good, good atmosphere for those kids. So, all right, well, uh, let's go ahead and take a break and we will bring in I guess Mike Sauter, who, um, we didn't have on last week. So excited to have him back on. He's been traveling around to, uh, kind of some of the area schools went to the, is it the Centennial conference? Correct. Yeah. yeah so it was at boys town. And so we'll talk to him about some of those games. Uh, Coming right up after we hear from our sponsor, Cornerstone Bank. We'll be right back. Yeah, I get it. For the little things. Technology's great. It makes things easier. It's faster. We can get things done 
wherever we go. And we get all that from our bank. It works for us. But for the bigger things, the things that really count, I still want to talk to the people I know and trust. That's why I'm here. Mike, you're live on hey. Prep Huddle Live. How are you doing, man? Hey. Man, I'm good. I, uh, I am very good, actually. Beautiful day outside. Uh, had some really good games this week, uh, this weekend, and more to come. And uh, you know, we're we're getting into the the, the nitty gritty home stretch here. Yeah, that's right. That's what we were just talking about. How busy this time of year is, and uh, with conference tournaments, and then we'll go right into sub districts. And um, it's a fun time of year. And unfortunately, it doesn't sound like the weather is going to stay very nice for us. So, no, yeah, this weekend might. Might, we might not have 60 degrees this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> might, might get a little snow, it even sounds like. So hopefully we get a all these bit. teams in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Mike, let's get right into it, man. Um, I know last night you were at, uh, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, you saw Columbus SCOTUS play uh, Grand Island Central Catholic. Is, uh, yeah. Uh, how was, uh, you know, give us that game, Grand Island Central Catholic kind of, uh, reverse the tables from an earlier game this year where uh, SCOTUS really controlled things uh, here at Central Catholic. I was able to watch a little bit of that game, and it sounded like uh, Coach Martinez and the Crusaders went big and uh, uh, went with a little bigger lineup and were able to do do the opposite, control things the other way in this game. Yeah, you know, I, I was really impressed. Um, I mean, Johanna – and if I'm saying his name wrong, I apologize. That's a tough one. But uh, he was very good, uh, very good. And and you can tell why he's a Division One football player slash athlete. I mean, he his footwork's great. Uh, but but uh, Coach Martinez really had him playing very well on the defensive end. Uh, and I you know I I chatted with uh, Coach Martinez after the game, and uh, I said. You know, I, I was very impressed with your defensive effort. Uh, they they really did a good job playing defensively. Refs let them play a little bit. It, it was pretty physical, uh, but but uh, you know they they really did a very good job. And Grant Lom had three points in the first half, and uh, you know he he's Scotus's kind of go to guy there. So uh, I I really was impressed with with that effort uh, from from GICC last night. And then obviously, I know you can't be in two places at once, but you can probably mm -hmm. give us a uh, uh, pretty good rundown on Bellevue West and Omaha Creighton Prep, uh, which was a yeah. man old school eighty four seventy five game. I love it. Can we? Can man, we have wouldn't, more wouldn't of those, that be please? nice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, it, from the sounds that I had, I, obviously uh, Jacob, one of my my uh, guys that that writes for the site, was. Uh, uh, was there and uh, he just the report back you know and, and even reading his game recap was uh, W West just really shot the ball very well uh, both teams kind of did so uh, W West went on a little bit of run and and even without Malik Kaluchiwaki playing uh, last night it, you know they got a, a pretty big win and uh, I tell you I saw W West Norfolk on Saturday uh, evening and W West had it was without Brad Clough, uh, one of their starters, and without Malik, one of their starters, and and they both, uh, and Bellevue West was was very good that night. Um, it had a chance to win, led the whole game on Saturday, so it really isn't too surprising. Uh, I think I think I think last time I chatted with you guys that they are Bellevue West is kind of making sort of the same run, or or it looks like they're getting ready to make the same run that they did last year heading uh, into the home stretch of the season in the final month or so so yeah it's going to be a really interesting if you ask me uh you just look at the at the rankings in class a and uh i think you've got maybe four five six teams that probably can uh make a run at a state championship do you feel the same way yeah i think that there are um you know there are four for sure uh, that I don't think anyone would would be surprised if it was uh, Norfolk, Creighton Prep, Omaha South, and Bellevue West in the semifinals yep. of Class A. 
I, I, I don't think that would be a surprise at all. Uh, then your next tier uh, is uh, your Lincoln High and Omaha North, uh, and then you kind of throw Millard West and Lincoln Northeast in there. So there's probably an eight uh, that, you know, those right now looks like they've kind of, those eight have really separated those themselves and the top four have, have really kind of separated themselves also, I think. Uh, so those, those are important. And, and Omaha Central has a big game uh, in prep, even those two coming off of two losses now. On Friday night, they they play each other, so that'll be a that'll be a big test for I think both uh, both teams there. Where's that one at? Is that on? We have that one, Taylor. Or is that at prep? That's at Ralston Arena. Oh, is yeah. Central gonna yes. is Central gonna stream stream that one? They are. They're streaming it. Um, this is one of their alumni only events. So I'm actually I'll be up there yep. for that game, helping them. Um, a former I can't pronounce his last name, but Tom. Coratori, I think he went to Central, is going to be doing the play-by-play on that. So all cool. the cool. alumni foundation folks uh, that are part of that will be able to watch that game. So they'll put up the recording afterwards. So so that'll be fun. Yeah. Good atmosphere there. Uh, yeah, it will Mike, be. yeah, I wanted to go into, um, I guess, kind of some other things you're, you'll are you be doing this week. Will you uh, – I assume you'll maybe be down to the Centennial Conference uh, – in uh, in Lincoln, uh, maybe on Saturday, would that be a safe call or not? I I personally won't be. Um, okay, uh, and, but we will have it completely Coverage. covered. Um, we'll have yeah, we'll have uh, we'll have the semifinals and the final covered. Uh, which uh, people you know kind of asked me last night uh, just about the conference when I was in the gym and <laughs> I, the state champion, uh, maybe champions are right. coming from that district. I mean, it, it's it, it, that's it, that district will have, I think, the state champion and and maybe two. So yeah, you have probably uh, the two best teams in C two, in my opinion, and yeah. three of the five best teams in C one are probably in that conference. And yeah, yeah it's how a bear? <laughs> yeah, how about Grand Island Central Catholic? Right, you beat the number one team in C one in the quarterfinals, and then you've got to play the number one team in C two in the semifinals. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tino, Tino no. signed up for a good one. I, I, I'm actually going to not watch them play the rest of the year. Uh, just do them a favor. I watched them. I covered their game against Lincoln Christian, and they were just awful. Uh, I think they mm. were like four for 31 from three point, and they they didn't make any con- really concerted effort to get the ball inside to Gaffon. And since then, they've just won 11 in a row. So I think they've uh, <laughs> stay away. I think man. they've yeah. yeah. I think they've you probably. Yeah, exactly. I think they've probably figured it out. So one other one I wanted to touch on with you last night that was kind of a big one, and if I'm catching you off guard, I apologize, but the the show, maybe you just read the recap or maybe you haven't, but the show that Winnebago put on um, against mm-hmm. uh, Bancroft Rosalie last night who was undefeated in D2, mm-hmm. and, and Winnebago I think is eighth in C1, but, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, 94 games, that can win you – that can win you points. two in 2015. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, did, yeah. Have, have you seen Winnebago play, or can you tell us about I, any? Yeah, I you know, saw Winnebago. Players? Yeah, I saw Winnebago play. Uh, uh, it was uh, the their uh, holiday tournament, the Fremont Bergen holiday tournament is at Midland. Uh, Bergen got them that night, but uh, the Wingate brothers are, are pretty good. And yeah. They they like to just kind of get up and down and go. Bergen that night really slowed them down, I think, a little bit. But uh, but those two can really score, and it, it, you know it's not necessarily a surprise. Uh, well, I mean, whenever anyone puts up that that kind of points, it's a surprise, especially this day and age. But um, <laughs> it, I think, I think they have you know very capable of putting up those numbers. Just watching them that one game. Uh, and and those two brothers are are pretty good. Yeah, they had twenty nine and and sixteen last night, and then Corey Cleveland mm-hmm. has twenty one for Winnebago. So yeah, you're right. Yeah. You had that uh, Fremont Bergen beat them fifty fifty four to forty eight. So it was kind of a yeah. uh, a slower game, and they were able to control tempo a little bit. I know I've seen Bergen play. I think about the last two or three years in the in uh, Tino's event here in Grand Island and. They have. Mm-hmm. They know how to guard. Coach Paulson has them. Has a really good, uh, really good uh, defensive philosophy so, there, and they do a good it job. So. It doesn't hurt that they have one of the best players in the state, also. So. Yeah, in any yep. class, right? <laughs> so. Right. The, yeah. the last one I wanted to uh, 
uh, I don't know if you've ever, you know, the one close to my heart is the old Crossroads Conference Tournament. And I don't know if you've ever been in the old city auditorium, but I got my fingers crossed that we might see High Plains number one and BDS number three uh, on Friday night. Are, are those teams, I know you'll, obviously you'll probably get a chance to see BDS here in a couple weeks at the, at yeah. the Hoops Classic, but uh, yeah. have you seen either of those teams since state last year? I have not, I, and uh, actually, I'm, I'm hoping to see High Plains in the uh, Friday night uh, before the Heartland Hoops Classic out there. So uh, there that's my plan as of right now, so I can catch both of them, uh, you know, in in back to back days. So cool. I haven't seen them, so I I, I, I can't speak on them. Both teams uh, obviously playing really well, and you know, I know High Plains got a nice win against Heartland last week, and so. Uh, they've kind of really reloaded there. I was talking to, you know, we talked to Coach Hudson last week on the show, and, yeah. and he just kind of rolls his eyes. He didn't really expect this to, didn't really expect this, I don't think, this year, and says they really still kind of learned about themselves, but it appears they've got it figured out pretty well. So, um, well, I know it'll be a busy week and a uh, sure. busy weekend. So, we uh, obviously look. He is this weekend, too, in Class B. I mean, it, there's, there's, a, there's a whole lot going on. <laughs> This yeah. Weekend. Yeah, and that's the last thing I was going to ask you, um, which you kind of already touched on. But how can uh, folks stay connected with you guys and all your writers, other than sure. your website? And then where are you going to be starting tomorrow night and all the games? If you yeah, have that um, in your head, I know you do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> we, we. I know for sure we'll be at the Centennial semifinals uh, on Friday, and then the Centennial. Uh, uh, final on saturday uh we'll also have someone at uh the emc final on friday uh, depending on where that's at uh, uh highest seat gets that and then friday night uh we'll be at uh the prep central game too okay. so we're going to try and try and spread that spread the wealth out or, or the love out a little bit to to everywhere um you know the the class a slate this weekend isn't isn't quite as strong uh, so we, you know, whenever we get an opportunity, we, we try the best we can to, to hit things other than, uh, the Metro or, or, uh, uh class A. Mike, where's the EMC bracket stand right now? Will they play semifinals tomorrow? Yeah, it'll be, uh, so Plattsmouth Gretna, uh, at Gretna, uh, and, and then, uh, Bennington and Elkhorn South, uh, at Elkhorn South tomorrow night. Two really good games there, probably. Which as well. be, yeah, and that yeah. that Bennington Elkhorn South game went down to the absolute wire. Uh, I, I saw that game the, the first time they played Bennington, beat them at Bennington. So uh, that should be another very good game. Excellent. Well, I pray we appreciate you ha uh, appreciate you being on with us and uh, have fun this weekend and hopefully do it again yeah. next week. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. Let me know, guys. Yeah, anytime. All right. Thanks, thanks Mike. Mike. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, Mike. All right, I want to thank Mike for joining us there at, uh, on our Front Runner Fab uh, hotline. Can I call it that? I don't know. That sounds sure. It just kind of rolled off the tongue there. Um, call it whatever you want. So I want to thank uh, Front Runner Fab for, for sponsoring the show and strivesports.com. If you guys, your school needs new seating, get a hold of those guys. They'll hook you up uh, like they did High Plains and Shelby Rising City and several schools in the area, but they can go anywhere. So. Um, always good to talk to Mike, a wealth of knowledge. They, that guy's got a, a nice crew that um, I know uh, does does good job of just kind of covering games and giving you a, a beat on, on what's going on. And his big thing is, hey, we're not just the Metro. We want to, he wants to get out and cover the rest of the state as well as much as they can and uh, during the regular season. So, Yeah, they do a great job, uh, Mike does. I mean, and he's all over – uh, the recruiting aspect of of where kids are going and stuff, and yeah, he probably knows more than we forget uh, from week to week. So, uh, Mike does a Mike does a heck of a job. So, let's. Uh, do you want to run into uh, yeah. just wrap up these uh, boys rankings, and then we'll reset the conference tournament, and then I think we can sign off and and uh, get ready for some awesome games tomorrow night. So sounds good. Um, in uh, of course, we have Central and Miller West both back in the Class A rankings. Mike uh, kind of alluded to both of those schools, kind of in that bottom uh, bottom part of the of the Class A rankings. Miller West eleven and three, Omaha Central nine and five. But back in the rankings, they beat Papillion La Vista South here. Then last week, uh, who was 
uh, ranked ninth, and Papillion La Vista South is now tenth. So, uh, in Class B, I think I'll probably just do these conference tournaments as I find the rankings here, Taylor. So, okay. Gretna is still number one. Mike alluded to them. Uh, uh, Seward is fourth, and and Aurora is tenth. Those are two teams that you'll see in the Centennial Conference tournament. Uh, I'm sorry, not Centennial, <laughs> the Central Central Conference tournament. It's they conference all start names, with C. Yeah, right. So. Uh, those will be on, like you said, those will be on Strive Sports. So the, the boys' semifinals will be Friday night. And so that will be, uh, let's see, Seward is the top seed there. Yep. They'll play York in one semifinal, yep. and that game will be in York. And then uh, Aurora, I did not see the Crete Lakeview score last night, Taylor. Yeah, is that Crete? Crete won. 54-32. Yep, yep, there it is. So uh, Aurora will play Crete. So all the top four seeds on the on the boys' side. Uh, will be Friday night in York, and I'm guessing you will be at York High School, and I will be at the City Auditorium, yep. and we'll have that uh, blanketed uh, for uh, for our uh, for our Twitter followers and Facebook, and we'll probably post some some pictures as well. So, Absolutely. Uh, you know, he also mentioned that Eastern Midlands Conference. Uh, uh, Elkhorn South is fifth, and Bennington is sixth, and they'll play in that other semifinal there um, in Class C one. Uh, we do not have anyone. See, one's kind of our bugaboo, I guess. We got to find somebody, uh, find somebody there to uh, to get ranked in, in Class C two. Give uh, us a we call, C one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in in uh, C two, we have Southern Valley, who is fourth. Uh, they are eleven and three. And let me pull that bracket up for the Republican Plains uh, Conference. So, uh, what did we say? We have, uh, I believe, Hitchcock County is playing Paxton in yep. the West Division <clears throat> final. Yep. And Southern Valley, who was the top seed, is playing. Uh, where did that one go? They play Cambridge uh, in the in the other final. That game will be at Southwest. I don't know if uh, Southern Valley will take their. I don't think uh, so. Take their camera with them or not? Yeah. But, We'll um, keep you posted. We, yeah, we hope, and I think you said we were going to maybe try to find out. Uh, all both of those Republican Plains finals are in Wallace on Saturday. Who uh, is at Strive, and we might be able to get both of those final games um, on the Wallace channel. So we'll find out uh, that probably later this week, and and uh, we'll tweet that out and put it on Facebook uh, there. Uh, we also have in uh, Class C two Twin River uh, is still ranked tenth. At uh, at thirteen and three, so in D one, then as I kind of alluded to, crossing my fingers for uh, High Plains and Bruning Davenport Shickley, uh, they will you're, be you're both not making in the any sem- friends at Exeter Milligan, man. I am not Exeter Milligan. They're lowly Exeter Milligan, ranked fourth in Class D two. <laughs> yeah. uh, how about either either one of those? Yeah. Uh, you know, they have played. Uh, you know, Exeter Milligan, Bruning Davenport Shickley have already played two times, and Bruning Davenport Shickley has won uh, both of those games. You know, in that kind of twelve to to fourteen point range, they played a regular season game on Friday that was on the channel, and they also played in the first round of the of the Mudakis tournament uh, earlier earlier in January. So High Plains will have Giltner in the other semifinal. Giltner Osceola was a four five game last night. That Giltner is the five seed one. So uh, in the Crossroads Conference, it's one two three five in both uh, the boys and girls. So. Uh, they'll play that out all tomorrow night, and it'll go boys, girls, uh, boy, girl, boy, girl. So uh, the first game will be Giltner and Meridian girls, followed by Giltner and High Plains boys, and then Hampton will play Extra Milligan's girls, and then the nightcap will be the Extra Milligan Bruning Davenport Shickley boys game, uh, which will all be at the York City Auditorium. For that one, so that uh, you know, I I'd be remiss. Heartland is fifth in uh, Class D one still as well. They uh, obviously a tough loss to um, uh, High Plains last week, a 49-48 game. That was a, a fun one, but they bounced back to beat a Sutton team who was playing really well. Uh, and it was a that was a double overtime game that they won, and um, uh, so Heartland's right there, and they'll. They'll obviously be getting in the thick of the Southern Conference tournament next week, and I'm sure they're uh, rip roaring ready to go to play all those C2 and C1 yeah. teams uh, next week. And then D2, we should probably run through uh, D2 really quick. As we said, Extra Milligan is fourth uh, in D2, but Paxton is undefeated, 15 and 0, and second in D2. And then Hitchcock County is now 11 and 4, and they'll play in that one semifinal. 
uh, with the winner getting the, the Southern Valley Cambridge winner out in the Republican Plains uh, Athletic Conference final, uh, which those will be on Saturday as well. So uh, jam-packed week, yeah. man, and it's just going to get more and more fun as we, uh, as we go on. So That's right, and uh, as always, you can find uh, scores through ScoreStream on Stripesports.com and follow us on Twitter. Um, we are connected to all of our schools, and Tony um, took over Twitter last night and just and uh, <clears throat> sent out a bunch of stuff, and and everyone is aware of what happened at York and a sad day in the York Duke community, and um, it was pretty cool to see their community come together and, and support um, uh, that student there and the families. Um, so, yeah, a lot of stuff going on, and, and kudos to um, – York staff for for hanging tough and the kids and and everyone for as they host the tournament the next couple days so yep I echo everything you just said there sir all right and that will we'll wrap things up and you can find us on Twitter the next three days and watching live uh, Central Conference tournament as we noted um, you can watch all those games on the York channel on Strive TV and uh, we'll we'll be posting photos and. And everything we can think of, follow us on Snapchat, Strive TV, um, Instagram, Strive TV, Strive Sports, and uh, stay connected with what's going on. So, <clears throat> as always, if you got any feedback, use the hashtag Live. Love to hear from you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, for Tony Chapman, I'm Taylor Siebert. Have a great week, guys. <laughs>